Hello everyone, my name's Colin, welcome to Onion Skin, and here I'm going to be preparing a character for rigging in Harmony 12 Essentials using a cutout animation method that I like to call daisy chaining. It's probably got a more official name than that, but that's how it seems, so that's what I'm calling it. In the last video, we prepped the character using Toon Boom Studio, and today we're going to be doing it in Harmony 12 Essentials. Now, I don't have the artwork prepared in Harmony Essentials, so I'm going to be drawing a fresh one from scratch, but I need myself some reference material. So in Stage Essentials, going to go to File, Import, Images, and you can find this reference image in the description. Once you've downloaded it, hit on the Browse button here and go to where it would be. With that selected, make sure you have Create Single Layer turned on. And these here, no real matter, keep it on color and leave the Vectorize button on as well and hit OK. And there we are, this screenshot will appear in Harmony Essentials. Right off the bat, you'll notice that the reference image has this great big bar through it, literally because I just took a screenshot from the Toon Boom Studio version, but that's okay because I'm not going to do a direct trace of this one. I'm just going to use it to copy from. Okay, so this is the character's layer here. I'm going to select it with the black arrow and shift it across. There we go. Uh, the grid is turned on. I do not want that because he's ugly. So I can go to view, grid, and that will disappear. G on the keyboard will also... Yeah. And with the brush tool selected, pull down to get your colors. I'm going to choose a blue. Uh, so let's start drawing. Down on the timeline here, I'm going to hit the plus and go to color card to bring in a full white background. And it may tuck that first drawing layer underneath the color card. We don't want that. So drag it back above. Behave yourself. There we go. Uh, select a blue color. There we go, that's looking alright. Ah, oh, the grid's back on again, Gee, go away, you poop poop. I make my brush nice and thin, because I'm just sketching at this point. Kind of just sketch up the character, probably a little bit differently. Of course, you could trace over it, but I just feel like doing it again. Uh, in case you want to come up with your own character, or, or want to draw this variant of him a little bit differently. It's been a long time since I first drew this one, I think I can do it a bit better now. Hopefully. Let's put a bit more arc in that chest and make his collar bigger and all that kind of fun stuff. Although I do like how the tie is very very short in that one. Like he's just got a man-sized tie but you know he's like 10 foot tall. <laughs> By drawing him on a more deliberate three-quarter view as well it's probably gonna make it a bit more appropriate for a uh, cutout style. One cool thing that I really appreciate about cutout animation is because so much of the animation is done with just a single set of drawings, it means you can put a lot more time and energy into those couple of drawings. You can get a lot more detailed character designs out because you don't have to because you don't have to draw the entire thing every single frame. So you can kind of let your imagination go a little bit more and put in way more detail than you otherwise would with no penalty. However, the catch-22, of course, is you've got to keep in mind that it has to be certain position angles and things that can move around with as much flexibility as possible with, and the rig will still make sense. You know, there's only so much I'll be able to do with these shoulder pads, for instance, because they're seen at this uh, depth angle. If it tilts too far up that way, uh, then it would need a bit of a 3D effect and you know, screw that, so they'll only have a limited degree of movement, probably only to about there before it stops making sense. So these are the things you need to keep in mind. Also remember that this isn't the time for dramatic poses. We're going to be building a skeleton directly off of this thing. So if his arms are folded over his body or the elbows are twisted at strange angles, then it's not going to make sense. I just had to stop myself from drawing, you know, this arm round like that. But it needs to be out straight. The head I'm pretty fond of as is, so I'm just going to trace directly over this one. I can make it a bit easier to see by pressing this light bulb down here in the bottom left of the camera view and the other layers will fade away. And if I want these lines that I'm drawing to be a bit faint as well, I can open up the blue palette here and bring its opacity down as well. Using the OK, I can manually expand and decrease 
my brush size. Okay, with that first sketch done, uh, just now overlaying it and realizing how much nicer the proportions on the original one were. Perhaps I got greedy and the fact that I don't do much drawing at work means I have gotten rusty and things are a little bit silly. But, I don't know if you'd agree, but I have a feeling that a lot of the things that's making it look strange is to do with the proportions and the individual positioning of each part as opposed to the drawing as a whole. So if I just shift things around, that might start to look a bit better. Uh, which being a cutout puppet, all these pieces will be very easy to shift about. If I just put that there and... The waist should be a lot shorter, huh? Sorry that I'm kind of just thinking aloud, but I think it's important to leave these mistakes in the video because you can hopefully get a better feel for the process and where you might like to go back on your own drawings and decide for yourself where certain things aren't good enough and could stand for improvement. Uh, I should explain this bit here I was having an issue with because it goes in front and then behind uh, the shoulder but that doesn't make sense with the cutout thing because it's going to be layered one piece on top of another so anything that goes both in front in one area and then behind in another won't make sense so I'm going to add back in this kind of tear on the shirt, which is just gonna go completely over the top of the rear shoulder pad. And then I don't have to worry about that issue again. Where's the tear on this one? Will be seen underneath the front shoulder pad there. Uh, that tie's looking too far to the left, put him there. And I'll add in the collar once more as well. Also from what I learnt, creating that studio puppet, how certain parts needed to be rounded out. I'm just going to draw this one with that in mind. Having round wrists and things so that they can easily pivot about once it comes together. So I'll just test that now. Using the cutter tool to select these parts of the artwork and then rotating that around like that. Um, oh, it could be a bit, a bit rounder. So just a reminder, the main tools I'm using besides the brush uh, is the cutter tool, not the select tool. And that's because the black selection tool will grab full pieces of vector artwork and then move it around, you know. The f if this is a stroke and you select just there, the whole thing becomes selected. But with the cutter tool, whatever you select will grab just that part there. So that makes sketching a lot easier when uh, you are sketching with vectors. Okay, I'm gonna make a duplicate of this arm by copy pasting and then in tool properties, there's this double arrow. There we go. Put him in place. Yeah, that's, that's looking okay. I was gonna tidy things up by making them a bit more symmetrical. Look, you know, this spike here is way thicker than this one. And Before we move on, the sketch does seem done, but it's not prepped for a rigging process because as parts move, things that we currently can't see will become revealed. So say, what if this arm moves over here? What's here? What gets revealed underneath the elbow? There's things under other things that we can't see yet, so we're going to need to draw those in their completeness so we know what to do when we come to inking. Uh, so in a red color, I'm going to also fade that out a bit so it's not terribly distracting. But I'm going to draw underneath each part so I can see how they work. So for example, this lower arm here, right? I'm going to draw this. 
So you see that? So that closes off the shape. It's a simple shape, but now if the hand moves, it's not going to break the artwork. You know, it's not going to be empty space that gets revealed underneath. So I need to do this for each part. So these legs here, also simple shapes. This arm's just a mirror, so of course it'll be the same. This elbow portion, probably a bit different because it's made of cables. So I'm just going to do that. These arms will have a bit more going on than others. There we go. And what would it be like underneath this t-shirt? More tears, I suspect, but I need to be careful that it's not going to ever, you know, get revealed under there, so there wouldn't be a tear there. It would need to stop there at the very least. Under the shirt like that. The collar and tie I'm gonna make as their own layers as well, so what would these buttons look like underneath? Something like that, I suppose. Oops. The waist is also going to be a different layer from the body. So I'm going to finish these parts off as well. This is probably... Oop. This will be a round shape, so the torso can pivot on top of it. And it's made of a plated section as well. Okay, so that's all I needed to do. That wasn't too much. Uh, actually, except I'm completely wrong. Uh, when you think it's done, it's never done. Uh, this is a good opportunity to use the black arrow uh, because if you select the whole stroke, it'll delete them and not interfere with the blue artwork. Uh, I need to finish off the head because this mouth plate is likely going to shift up and down. So we need to be able to see what the face looks like underneath the eyebrows and underneath the mouth plate. So this eye section is like that. And the whole head is pretty ball like and that would come down to there but there's no more spikes okay that's it yeah I think we're done now but I always need to be cautious I call it the pots and pans theory you know have you ever been washing dishes and you've finished everything off you wipe down the bench you empty the sink and you look to your left you forgot the pots the biggest the dirtiest and the grimiest part of the whole lot all right, here's all sketched up. And uh, now to ink it, I'm gonna turn off the reference, leave the color card on, turn off the light box as well. I'll probably be able to pump that back up to its full opacity now. Alrighty, it's all sketched up. So now in the next video, we're going to be setting up the layer hierarchy, setting up essentially what the bone chain is going to be before moving on to inking the character. So join me then, have some fun, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for coming by. I hope you got something out of it. If you got stuck somewhere or something was a bit tricky, or if you have an idea for something else you'd like to see in a video, uh, please let me know. In the meantime, you can check out some of my other stuff in those links just there. Whoa. But thanks again, and I'll see you again soon.